What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Jamal Murray is going to get free Tim Hortons for life if he keeps playing like this for the rest of the finals. As always, I'm your host, Zach Cronin, and I'm thankful that you would choose to spend some time with me here today. What I have lined up for y'all today is a little bit of discussion about Game 3. Um, obviously game three of the NBA Finals between the Nuggets and the Miami Heat. A little bit of discussion about Nicole Jokic, but I'm feeling a little Canadian today. And I'm feel I feel like celebrating Canada, even though the Northeast just got smoked out because of these Canadian wildfires. Jamal Murray, of course, is Canadian, represents the Canadian national team, uh, played all of his amateur basketball in Canada before coming to the United States, uh, before more specifically going to Kentucky, I actually don't even know if that's true. I'm just spitballing off the top of my head, but whatever. I'm starting to ramble. Game three, uh, listen, I'm going to keep it a whole buck. Game three was a very, very difficult viewing experience for me. The first two games, um, I had no issues being captivated. Game three, however, just did not have that x factor it didn't have it i was just disconnected from basically the entirety of the game we already know miami lost this game 109 to 94 it was a very very poor showing from miami uh shot 37 percent from the field overall 31 percent from the three-point line just again overall a very lackluster performance from the miami heat jimmy butler had just uh, well, actually, Jimmy Butler didn't play that bad. I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm looking at Bam Adebayo. He shot just 7 of 21 from the field. Gabe, Gabe Vincent just 1 of 6 from 3. Max Struess just 1 of 4 from 3. And this game, Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic took it over. The first teammates in NBA Finals hi history have 30-point triple-doubles. An absolutely explosive performance from both of these guys. Jokic finished with 32 points, 21 rebounds. And 10 assists also looked fantastic on the defensive end as well. And his homeboy, Jamal Murray, with 34 points, 10 boards, and 10 assists himself. Jamal Murray was also very locked in on defense. I will say, Denver, after getting, I don't want to say getting smoked in Game 2, but not performing up to the level that we expect from them in Game 2, looked locked in. Uh, they It looks like all of the comments about their energy resonated with them whether it was kcp speaking out whether it was michael malone speaking out whether it was all of us little shitters on twitter speaking out and it feels like miami swapped places with them because i was watching this heat team all throughout game three and they just looked off they were getting beat to 50 50 balls they weren't really locked in on offense there there was no movement it was stagnant it was just very difficult to watch on both ends of the ball and also on defense as well all of the analysis that i did in the aftermath of game two talk about kevin love talking about making Jokic a scorer none of that happened i guess i'll take an l on this one it was just one of those performances from the nuggets where your star players did what they're supposed to do in the finals and Jokic and murray did that they gave you 66 points miami without making at least 35% of their threes, is not beating this Nuggets team when Jokic and Murray are both locked in. And they were able to eke out this victory despite getting no production from KCP. Shot just one of four, finished with six points. You had Michael Porter Jr. turn into Michael Scott with Shakira on the sideline. He shot just one of seven from the field, missed both of the three-pointers that he took. Bruce Brown didn't really do anything notable. Uh, Jeff Green was a non-factor. The only other boost that Denver got in this game was courtesy of Christian Brown, who once again came off the bench and blew Miami out of the water with his energy, his tenacity, his impact on the defensive end, creating turnovers, creating chaos, which allowed Denver to create offense. But this time... He actually had a meaningful impact on offense as well, finishing with 15 points, including one and one in the third quarter, I believe, and shooting seven of eight from the field. The one shot he missed was a three-pointer that clanked off the side of the backboard, and immediately after that, he was like, nah, I'm recognizing my game. I'm going to play the role of a little Aaron Gordon. Almost hang out on the baseline, just kind of roam around, play, like, not free safety on offense, but just roam. A little bit and see what happens and it was his production that really i feel like 
crushed Miami spirits in the third quarter because they were already having a difficult enough of a time against this incredibly well-oiled Denver offense. And once Christian Brown came in, they just had no answer. They, it's really odd to say that they had no answer for Christian Brown, but that's how it was. Now, Jeff Van Gundy said this on the broadcast, and this is about Nikola Jokic. I'm going to get to Jamal Murray a little bit. I just want to get all of my other thoughts out of the way. Nikola, jo- Nikola Jokic, um, to me, is without a doubt the best player in the NBA right now. And going into next season, will be the best player in the NBA. It is his accolade to lose. And he's reached a level that we saw from, like, prime LeBron. This this heightened versatility where he's so impactful in every area of the game that he, he cannot play poorly. Ever. Jeff Van Gundy said on the broadcast, like he may shoot bad, but he will never play bad. And this is true when you have a guy who can get 21 boards every night, when you have a guy who can dish out 10 assists any night, when you have a guy who can be locked in on defense. I mean, Bam, I don't think Bam made two shots inside the restricted area in game three. It was a, oh man, it was so difficult to watch him play outside. It was so difficult to watch him play below the free throw line. Just, Missing layups, you know, like he, Jokic looked like the Kembe Mutombo on Bam, but his impact is just like indescribable. I, I can no longer find words to properly articulate the level of greatness, the level of efficiency, the level of proficiency that Nikola Jokic is playing with. And he's been, there's been no shortage of praise for him on social media, on talk radio, on cable, on cable sports shows, whatever. Everyone's talking about how great Nikola Jokic is because he is. He's spectacular. I'm not going to get into where his legacy stands after he potentially wins his first title, but just know that he is shaping up to be one of the all-time greats. Like He has everything. The only thing, he has all the requisite talent to be one of the all-time greats. He just needs to continue to stay healthy, collect as many awards as possible, this, that, whatever, but he's a fantastic player, and he should not be taken for granted. I don't want to come off as like a hater in this video because I didn't put Jokic in the title, but I didn't put Nikola Jokic in the title because I want to talk about Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray is as critical to Denver's title aspirations as Nikola Jokic is. I said before the playoffs began, Denver has the potential to be a championship team if Jamal Murray averages 25 a night, and he's doing that and more, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this. I know I'm like I'm not one to typically partake in hot take culture, but I don't believe this to be a hot take. This is one of the all-time great playoff runs from anybody. Jamal Murray is having one of the greatest playoff runs of all time, while his teammate is simultaneously doing the same. This is a level of dominance that has seldom been seen before. The, the heights that these two guys have reached at the same time is one that only comes around like once a decade. This is like Stephen Clay territory or Stephen KD territory, uh, LeBron and D. Wade territory, Shaq and Kobe territory. This is where we are at with them. Jamal Murray, again, is one of... Um, He's one of the more enig- enigmatic players that I've ever encountered because much like Jimmy Butler, his regular season numbers are rather pedestrian. This this regular season, this past one, averaged 20 points, 6 assists, and 4 rebounds while shooting 45% from the field and 40% from 3. Very respectable numbers, but not the numbers of someone who, at least on the surface, looks like they can help carry their team to an NBA title. Then you flip to the postseason, 27.4 points, 6.8 assists, 5.7 rebounds, has a true shooting percentage of damn near 59%. He's actually currently at uh, 57.1% true shooting, pardon me. The crazy thing is when I'm looking at his stat lines is that this is a guy who missed the entirety of last season with an ACL injury. This is a guy who doesn't really have that much playoff experience. And yet, even though this is his third time going to the playoffs, his lowest playoff scoring average is higher than his 
highest regular season average. This is, I can This almost does not compute. And you know, I'm kind of embellishing a little bit here because the separation is only one tenth of a point. But as a 21 year old during the 2018-19 playoffs across 14 games, Jamal Murray averaged 21.3 points. He shot just 42 percent from the field so had he been more efficient had it not been his first playoff series these numbers would have probably been closer to what he's averaging now his highest regular season total 21.2 points per night which he achieved back in 2021 the year before he tore his ACL now I plug these numbers into basketball references stat head database because I wanted to see how he stacks up all time. I knew that, you know, we're going to see LeBron in this category. We're going to see Steph. We're going to see Jordan. We're going to see Bird. We're going to see all the all-time greats. So I took the numbers that Murray is averaging throughout these playoffs. 27 points, 6 assists, 5 rebounds with a true shooting percentage of greater than 55. I did, however, get a little silly by adding an additional criteria of games played. The threshold, the minimum here, is it 15 games? And I did this not to cherry pick and, you know, try to make my um, case more compelling, even though I feel it does do that. Um, I think that it just makes more sense because you want to see a player be dominant throughout the entire playoffs. You want to see them advance and go two, three, four, and you want to see them go to the Western Conference Finals, to the NBA Finals. And also, you just want to see that, like, Guys are healthy because God forbid they play two games and then like blow out their knee or twist an ankle or something. But you want to see this prolonged, this prolonged level of spectacular play. Jamal Murray is one of nine players to have reached this, these milestones. I'm going to go tiny screen here. We have Jordan who did it four times. LeBron, who did it three times. Steph, who did it twice. Jokic, who is do doing it right now. Murray, who's doing it right now. Luka, who did it. James Harden, who did it. Kobe Bryant and Larry Bird as well. So one of nine. I'm also now going to take away the games played criteria just so you can get a full, uh, like a fuller list of all of the people who have done it all time. Even then, the list doesn't get that much bigger. It's only 10 additional people. Oscar Robertson, Kawhi Leonard, Brandon Ingram, Giannis, Paul George, Kevin Durant, Tracy McGrady. Like, these are some of the greatest players that the NBA has ever seen. And Jamal Murray, who is a, again, as I already mentioned, a rather pedestrian regular season performer, is among the all-time greats. Like, it may not feel like it. I mean, I'm sure it does feel like it because this guy just had a, a, a fucking 30-point triple-double. He is playing at another level right now. Like we say, we see Jimmy Butler is, you know, a playoff performer. Jamal Murray, to me, is a more frightening guy in the playoffs because he is significantly more dynamic than Jimmy Butler on the offensive end. I love Jimmy, but his inability to play on the perimeter hampers him a little bit. I think that is the one thing that's keeping Jimmy from like consistently being among the elite perimeter players in the NBA. I mean like he's undeniably an elite player, but he's more of an A tier guy for me as opposed to the S tier guys like KD, Jason Tatum, LeBron and it's because his scoring package is not as robust. Like he can get to the cut, he can play in the post, he can get to the free throw line, but you're not going to guard him on the perimeter, Jamal Murray, you have to guard him everywhere. He's putting the ball in the cup from wherever the fuck he wants. From three point, from the three-point line, from mid-range, he's getting to the cup. He did he absolutely fucking torched Miami in game three. Obviously, as a as a scorer, but as a passer. I know Murray does not have the he doesn't have the reputation of being a true point guard because he's not. He's definitely more of a two or one of those guys who's a point guard with shooting guard tendencies like a Damian Lillard or a Kyrie Irving. He he pieced, he pieced up Miami's defense. They blitzed him on pick and roll. He was composed. He was calm. He was, you know, stringing them along, finding Christian Brown, cutting baseline. It was a masterful passing performance and one that Denver was able to feed off of as a whole. So shout out to Jamal Murray again, having one of the most impressive playoff runs that 
I've ever seen. And, you know, statistically is having one of the most, imp- I don't want to say impressive again. This is a fucking word that I've been using a lot, but one of the most remarkable postseasons that the NBA has ever seen. And I know there are still at least two games left to be, be- left to be played. I hope it's more, but Jamal Murray, it, I hope I don't jinx him. I'm, I'm saying it on here. I, I pray to God, whatever, whatever God there is, whatever God you believe in, say a prayer to him that Jamal Murray does not fall off. But I feel it's really unlikely. And the remainder of this series is only going to bolster his case this spring and this summer as putting together one of the most insane playoff runs that we've seen definitely in recent history, but in NBA history as a whole. And with that, I'm going to bring this video to a close. Thank you so very much for coming to hang out with me today. Everything I'm associated with is in the description box below, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, subscribe to the channel, leave a like, drop a comment as well for the algorithm. And with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one.